Welcome to Co-op Mode, round 146. This is the official video game podcast of Secret Friends Unite. I am one of your hosts, Todd Oxtra from beautiful Savage, Minnesota. I just survived Chicago Fandom, and I am here to talk about video games with my good friend, the Canardian, Mark Carabin from Parts Unknown Atlantic. Mark, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm not even the Parts Unknown this time, though. We've got someone further east than I am in a very confusing, weird half hour difference time zone. So I'm not the Atlantean this time. I mean, kind of still am, you know, I'm still floating on an Island connected to our guests by a ferry. Uh, but like, I'm, I'm not the furthest one out this time for once. I am not the furthest one messing with the sea monsters. We've got uh, a new guest, Adam to introduce. Adam, yes. aka Bat Pixel, amazing creator of really cool content on his YouTube channel. He'll tell you all about that. If you have questions about the world of retro gaming devices, he is the man. If you're watching a video right now, he's got a Killer Clowns Runner space. He's got Batman in the background. I don't know if it's the real Batman or a, a body double and a cool arcade system. Oh my goodness, he's checking the belt. This is amazing. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. Batty P, Adam, welcome to the show. Yes, thanks for having me. I'm so excited that I finally got an excuse to break out the Killer Clowns in the Outer Space Shark, because this has been sitting in my drawer for a little while. I was like, yeah, it's time. <laughs> Excellent. I love it. I love it. Um, I'm a big fan of that uh, th that movie. I was at uh, Chicago Fandom, and there was actually a couple cosplayers doing the Killer Clowns from Our States. That is a commitment. It was wow. like 87 wow. degrees and 100% humidity. So if you're under that stuff, you're just almost dying. So it's amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. The game is out or not out? I can't remember. Oh, I, I don't remember either. But uh, yeah, the, I mean, the movie is hilarious. I I watched that. I think that came, that came, became like really popular in like 2020 or something like that. Uh, just oh, yeah. even though it came out in like the 80s or something, but it just exploded. And then all these shirts came out and stuff. And I watch it like every year. It's amazing. Mark, have you seen Killer Clowns from Outer Space? I have not. I'll have to add it to the list. Very, very uh, the great, game yeah. the game just came out in I want to say May or early June. Okay. So I'll have to I'll have to check out the movie too. It's it's such a fun time because they fully embrace the weirdom of clowns. They have like candy uh, or uh, uh, cotton candy like uh, like webs that entomb people. They have like clown devices and they're just it's just weird. It's fun. I love it. It's such a yeah, great, I, great I movie. That game out. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Yeah, actually. yeah it's like one of those. Um, I think it's an nature asymmetrical horror game. Like uh, I think, but it's because there's multiple clowns. It's a little different than versus like you're just versus Jason or you're versus Freddy yeah. or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah. I love the Friday yeah. 13th game too. That was awesome. Well, very cool. So before we get started, Adam, I gotta ask you a couple questions here to get for everyone to get to know you a little better. What was the first system you owned? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, the first one that we owned really was the original Nintendo. Um, cause my cousin next door had the Atari 2600 and like a Pong plug and play into the TV and like he had Nintendo. Uh, so he got us into that. Um, and so that was like our first one that we owned. Yeah. But after that, I mean, do you remember those black suitcases at the, like the VHS rental stores and you could rent game systems like your Super Nintendo or Sega Genesis and they yep. gave you like suitcases. Uh, we used to do that for uh, the Sega and the Super Nintendo. And then we ended up just owning those afterwards because we rented them like, you know, every week. So, yeah. Nice. So I have to what ask was, you because I always. What was oh. your local game game place called? What Where did you rent Perfect. it from? Oh, well, actually, our local game place was a place called Johnny Whalen's. It was just a convenience store out around the Bay. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> nice. it was like owned by like my buddies and up the street or something. But like, it, it was just like. <laughs> It was a convenience store. You go in and get some carrots and potatoes. And then, like, on the side, there was, like, a VHS place. And 
Yeah. Fantastic. I love that. Every, my lo- every local grocery store, every lo- had a video section. You bring up your little tab and say, I want this. And mine wasn't <laughs> cool enough to rent video game systems, so I had to go up to, to town. But I was also a purveyor of like the Genesis and the SNES for my rentals. I never owned one. So, but that's how I did it. That's why I, uh, I, I love those systems. So much fun. Uh, Cause it was how much gaming could you get in like one weekend? Oh, and yeah. you did your best to get as much as out of it because it was like you put it like a security deposit because like these idiot kids are getting a whole system. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You had to invite all your friends over too, but you kind of didn't want to invite your friends over because you wanted more time with the game system, but oh, you also yeah. wanted to be like, look at this thing. So it was like a, a really tough kind of balance of like, I'm going to invite a couple of people over just so I have some witnesses to be like, yeah, he actually played this game because we saw them, you know, but like you also going over like, you know what, you guys got to leave because I'm going to play this myself for a little bit back off yeah. my N64. So yeah, you, you can't, you can't be like the real life couch co-op, like when you're actually yeah. on the couch together, you know, but uh, yeah, like my, my brother uh, would invite his friends over to play like Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter, or, like, Link to the Past, whatever, on the Super Nintendo. But because he'd invite his friends over, then I'd be sat in the back of the room watching what I'd be wanting to play the whole time, but I couldn't, you know. So yeah, I know it's, it's, no, it's <laughs> Yeah, it's no past the controller when you die. You don't, you, you're just not there. And you also, if you rented a game, you got to hope you got the game that you rented previously so it's got your save file. If not, oh yeah, what's the point? Yeah. What's the point? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay, next question. What's the first game you bought with your own money oh see see growing up like our parents spoiled us rotten so that Ooh, i didn't that's actually nice to hear that. yeah i didn't have to do that until uh, you know later later years but i'm gonna say it was probably pretty late uh by the time i started buying my own games uh probably around the time like uh Grand Theft Auto Vice City and Grand Theft Auto 3 came out on the original Xbox because I was a huge Xbox fan and it was only on like PlayStation 2 or whatever. And I was like, yeah. I was rotted because I, I wanted to play that so much. So I, was like, I was like, man, it has to come out on Xbox or something. Cause, uh, and when it did, like I, I was I was straight for that. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Uh, Mark, do you have one final question? Because I usually ask these. Do you have one question to get into his uh, past gaming history? You know, you you talk a lot about retro handhelds and that kind of stuff on your channel. So I want to know what the first handheld you owned. We we went through first console NES. Did you jump right on the Game Boy? Were you like me and your first one was like a Game Boy Color? Or what was your first uh, what was your first handheld? Yeah, so I think like in grade four or something like uh, out around Bay, all the boys were into Pokemon. <laughs> So, uh, so we were like hardcore into Pokemon cards and stuff. So I got a Game Boy Color, a purple one, that specifically for uh, uh, Pokemon Blue. So I beat that, spent like endless amounts of time on that. Oh, are you serious? You got Game Boy <laughs> Color with Pokemon one. Blue, bud? No way! Yeah, well, he's hopeless. You exactly <laughs> what I'm saying. Yeah. But it's wild because after that, like I've always been a console gamer, and even in recent years, like I've always played on like PC and emulated stuff or like in recent years, I got into the mini systems and stuff. So I've always been in emulation, but um, I never really had too many handhelds. So mm. it actually kind of happened by accident that my buddy gifted me the Pow Kitty V90 last year, like the little yellow oh, flip wow. one. And uh, I just loved it. And I was like, oh, well, I'm going to, you know, dismantle it and, fix it up a bit and i was like well, why don't i make a video about it and then it just kind of snowballed from there so yeah you just but i love that you, you I love just that celebrated one. a year anniversary right yeah uh it was a year since my uh outlier video the asus rg ally so basically i found nice. out that you can reduce the temperature with that because it used to overheat so much and like burn sd cards and whatever so yeah i was like i was like you can actually go in and change like a cpu boost they got on and bring it way down but like it's really tangling and i was like no one's gonna know how to do this so let's just make a video on how to do it and it just exploded a year ago um wow just because i just had the thought in my head like you know it'd be nice if i could share this and you know it just it just helped everyone out and after that they actually incorporated that into the ally so now you can just tap on it and do that so um yeah so that's what that one year was about but uh bad pixel started in january 
2023 at the end of January. Yep. Okay. So it's been a little yeah. while. Someone asked yeah. you the origin of the bat pixel name. I see a oh. Batman <laughs> and I have pixels behind me. Is that it? Is that, is that what we're doing here? That is exactly it. So it's actually nice. kind of funny because uh, me and my dad built that arcade machine and nice. um, I kind of put the suit together from different parts. Like the, the boots are Darth Vader boots and I took steel toe, like toes out of boots and put them on the bottom and put like the bronze on it for the oh, Batman cool. versus Superman, like Frank Miller inspired Dark Knight Return suit. Um, so in my living room for years, because I was moving around so much, uh, through like university and stuff, I went back to school that uh, these were the only two real big things that I kept because when I was moving around so much, I like just sold off a lot of my retro stuff. Uh, so I had a huge retro collection. So I started getting into like emulation. So anyway, long story short, I guess when I was starting Bat Pixel, I was in my living room inspired to make a YouTube channel from something else. And uh, literally in front of me, it looked like this. My TV was in the middle and then there was like, you know, bat pixel, and I was like, "That's me." So it wow. just, yeah, bat pixel is me for sure. Uh, the background is what people kind of know me for if they come over and hang out or whatever. So yeah, right on. It's amazing. I'm so jealous of your arcade machine because that is my retro place. Uh, oh. I love arcade games. I love them, and uh, yeah, it's my favorite. So that's one thing I will eventually do. So yeah, you can do it for well, pretty cheap. Like, yeah, it, it, like if you can just kind of bring together like old stuff yeah. that, that people don't use anymore, which is what that's made out of, uh, you can do it for pretty cheap. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's I'm cool. soon to be an empty nester as my son goes to college in about a week. So I will have a lot of free time. So I'm more than learning. I've got a lot of woodworking tools. I am willing to learn and put my uh, spare time to good purposes. <laughs> Yeah, I have another <laughs> I would say. project on the go too. That's going nice. to be on the YouTube channel. Um, oh. But that's in the works when I when I get around to it. So I'm excited about that. Yeah. That's amazing. And uh, I think, folks, if you're interested in all this, uh, Batpix will be a pers person to follow and ask questions for. So definitely the right man for the job. So with that, we probably need to get into a little bit of business here. But before we do that, Mark, I think we need to do a little bit of a digital high five. I'm going to reach out, Mark. We do a high five. The, the high five. Close. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Secret Friends Unite hit 200 YouTube subscribers. I know that's small that's takes for some people, but for us, it's been a journey. Uh, my my YouTube's my YouTube and video generating skills have improved over time. They have been pretty bad. Mark's raised the bar. He's challenged me. And I'm so happy to put a little bit more production value behind this. So, and we bring Charlie along as the talent, apparently. So, <laughs> he's, the, he's a pretty face. Oh, oh we're gonna high five too, oh, everybody. Yeah, all right. There that's you great. go. I mean, ten subscribers is a milestone for someone out there. So, two hundred is great. That's 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 awesome. Yeah, yeah. very happy. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, it's great. And we got there with a, a big help from some people that I need to mention. So, I might as well jump right into that too. Uh, Where's where, where are you point? Where are you pointing at? You're pointing You're at pointing to our patrons. Oh, our patrons. Uh, I don't. <laughs> all right, I gotta put them on the screen now. Jeez. Um, to me, you're pointing at my 3D printer. I'm like, what am I printing? Thank you cards or something? Um, yes. Uh, so, <laughs> so I have to. Uh, I have to thank our bestie tier. That's Chris from One H One D, Derek Trevilian, aka the Figure Dude, Francie XEP, and Charlie's Uncle Tim, who we send cassette tapes of all our recordings to, I think, because uh, not an internet savvy man, but still supports us for uh, and not reasons Tim Horton, unknown. Unfortunately, yeah, not, not Tim, Tim Horton, Horton. Tim Horan. Uh, if if anyone would like to sponsor us from Tim Hortons, I do accept payment in Timbits. Uh, our friends with benefits tier: John Sedorf, Phoenix Sisters Entertainment, Brendan Myers, Corey in HD, and Matthew Keel. And our brand new tier, the ridiculously amazing Secret Friends Super Squad, including Sean, Stella, and Henry, the Nias family. Absolutely amazing supporters of everything we do. Um, so thank you once again to the Nias family and all of the other amazing Patreon supporters. Uh, 
if you're listening to this, you haven't checked it out, go to uh, patreon.com slash secret friends unite, where you can get a free seven day trial, but also for as little as $2 a month, you get exclusive shows, no ads on all these shows. You're going to hear an ad in a little bit. If you were a Patreon supporter, you could skip right through that. Uh, Discord benefits, different ways to interact with us. The Patreon party just happened a few weeks ago. You can jump in on that podcast uh, and fun other stuff. Um, you've got some, again, the the Patreon party, new show with me that I have to record a new episode of this week called Walk Nerdy With Me, as well as other exclusives and fun little benefits. So um, head on over to patreon.com slash Unite. If you can, throw a couple of bucks our way. If not, check out the free trial and then tell some friends. Just tell some friends about the YouTube channel. Get us to like 201. That would be great this week. Uh, <laughs> and just help us out in any way you can. We appreciate the, you know, the Patreon support, but we know like, you know, things can be tight. Money can be tight. Uh, extra buck or two can go a long way to help in other things, not just us. So again, that share, like, subscribe, telling a friend uh, counts just as much as throwing us a couple of bucks. So um, thank you to anyone that supports us in any manner. Absolutely. Just a fun fact. I actually ran into Kelly at Chicago Fandom from the Fister, F- Phoenix Sisters Entertainment. Very cool. wonderful person. She was out there cosplaying, I believe, as Wonder Woman. Very fun awesome. time. Um, and then I am helping Sean and Henry build their gaming PC this weekend. Oh, so yeah. So we'll see how that goes. That's exciting. Uh, they're getting a, oh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have a good time with that. And uh, one caveat that's not exactly fun, but yeah. Apple is going to start charging a 30% fee for all new memberships on Patreon purchased in the Patreon ISO, I, ISO, IS, no. iOS app. <laughs> uh, so I will say uh, for new members, if you're interested in joining us, do it through the web or through Android. Yeah. But right now that helps it because essentially it just takes a, a cut from us. We're not going to charge you more just to offset the fees, but it would just take a cut from us. So quite honestly, um, do whatever you want, uh, you know, share, uh, give us a rating, anything that works. But if you are going to sub, definitely do it through the, uh, the web because actually it's a much better experience anyways. Yeah, exactly. And you can All still right. use the app. Oh just yeah. Subscribe through the web, but you can still like download the shows and do all that kind of yep. stuff through the app as usual. As long as you use the same login information, just set everything up through the web browser, even through like an iOS device. You don't just don't use the app. Just use, use Safari on your iPhone or whatever, or a computer. Yep. Just, just skip the app for, for that setup process. Uh, and you will um, throw a tiny middle finger out to Apple. Tim Apple doesn't need your money. Oh, well. (laughs) Oh, well. Uh, Enough with the business. It's time for the fun. This is where the show starts. My goodness. We're doing buy, rent, return this week. This is just like uh, Adam talked about his uh, local grocery store where he bought uh, bait and also video games um, when he was going out to to fish. Uh, We go to a video store, and we have to basically make some tough decisions about video game mascots this week. What are we going to buy? What are we going to rent? What are we going to return? We've got Bubsy, Gex, and Blinks. I've provided box covers to certain games. But does that does not incorporate their whole, uh, I guess, menu of games that they've been in. So don't be distracted by Bubsy 3D, Gex 64, or Blinks 2. <laughs> it's just these are, are these console That's mascots. It, yeah. I believe okay. I believe Bubsy and Six uh, and Jack, uh, Gex were on everything. But Blinks was an Xbox specific mascot, actually developed in Japan. So there you go. Only the first Blinks game was actually released in the US. So fun fact. So there we go. Bubsy did have a cartoon, uh, one pilot that was horrible and never released. Check it out on YouTube if you want to see it. Uh, so with that, Adam, you're our guinea pig, I mean, guest uh, for Byron Return. Uh, yeah. With these mascots, what will you buy? What will you rent? And what will you return? I got a little bit of nostalgia bias for this because I did used to mess around on Bubsy back in the day. Just a bit. So, I mean, I would buy Bubsy. And I also think just, I don't know, like if Nintendo made like a modern version of that, they, just everything they're putting out is amazing. I just think, you know, if they took a character like that, maybe it would just be like, it'd be a good a good thing. I'd, I'd rent uh, Jex because... Uh, 
I think there's a lot of, you know, like character in that versus mm. Blinks. Like I didn't really play Blinks to be honest with you, but uh, I don't know. Jax just seems like like the, there's that picture of 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 him in like a James Bond outfit and stuff like that. Like there's just so much fun stuff you could do. Mm-hmm. No, but uh, I don't know. I'd I'd return Blinks though. Sorry, everyone out there, all the all the Blinks fans on the OG Xbox. But <laughs> fun <laughs> fact: the voice the voice of Gax was done by Dana Gould, comedian. So that was a big part of it. He was basically doing a, a comedy session when he performed his lines for for Gax. It was all about parodies and and stuff. So it was fun. I mean, and it was like I think first released on the 3DO. So using like the 3D effect for it. So um mm-hmm. I couldn't tell you much good about Bubsy 3D except the last game came out like not that long ago and I think it was more like a a, a runner and then Blinks I will definitely say I played it on because it's on Game Pass. If you have Game Pass, you can play Blink, Blinks right now. Not Blinks 2. I don't know if that'll come out. It's a very interesting game, very Japanese which is very interesting. So I, I, I support your picks. Yeah. Um, yeah. Bub, I like the Bubsy side scrollers. Those little, those yeah. little yeah. side yeah, scrollers. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. I'm, I'll jump in cause I'm going to mirror your, your quest, your, your answers specifically for that reason. The Bubsy like side scrollers, super Nintendo, um, Bubsy two, like yeah. they were, they were good. Like Bubsy, Bubsy two, I think is, that was a Game Boy, maybe. Um, but like the yeah, Bubsy, Bubsy had some solid platforming back in the day. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna go with that one. Like Bubsy nowadays has become this kind of like joke meme kind of thing of like this like shit out kind of mascot game. But I completely agree. If someone took the care to do it like Nintendo has done with, with some of their more modern platforms. Like you look at super Mario world or 3d world or whatever, um, Bowser's, uh, fury, that kind of stuff. Like you could put some love and care into Bubsy and actually make it work. Um, so I, you know, I'm, I'm still kind of swinging for the cat, uh, Gex. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say kind of the same thing. I think there's some personality there. There's some like funniness, that you could you could do that again and and i'm a big james bond fan so like enter the gecko deep cover gecko um you know that that kind of stuff kind of spoke to me and still still definitely would i think there's some some room for uh edgier funnier mascots you know again we get like mario we get sonic um i think i think there's a space for something like this it doesn't have to be as edgy as like conquer or something like that but i think there could be like just get a comedian in a booth and let him go crazy and then put a lizard in a suit in front of it and just call it a game um and blinks might be a great game but i've never played it so it has to by default be my return right now um specifically now, now if this was like games i want to play rather than like mascots that are close to my heart. This is going to flip because maybe I should try Blinks because I've tried the other two, you know, so like, but as far as like mascots that I'm holding near and dear to my heart, then that's, um, that's what we're going with for this one. So Todd, are you going to break the mold here or are you conforming with Mr. Bat Pixel and I and choosing the, that, that same order? I'm going third party okay. <laughs> in the U.S. We're in election year, so I have to do that. I'm picking Gex. Uh, Bubsy, although is the most, uh, actually the longest live of these characters, I'd mm-hmm. noticed that he had a game that just released in 2023. Um, and his yeah. first game was like 1990. It was on the, I think, Super Nintendo. Uh, but I'm going with Gex because he has a lot of personality. And I think it goes along with the fact that he really embraced like... Um, like a lot of these tropes almost like he's almost like the austin powers of video mm. game mascots yeah. <laughs> like doing like the 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 punish that like the james bond thing then i just put in here the last game he did was gex 3 deep cover gecko where he looked like he's like into kung fu he's with a sexy <laughs> like a, a a woman apparently in the 3d cutscenes, which is weird so a lot of weird sonic stuff um and then apparently you could get a from, demo uh, howard the duck sonic 
or Sonic, what was it, 06 or whatever? Mm. Or Sonic, uh, uh, yeah. So, no, but I think I think Gex had a lot of personality, even this first game. I like the style. He didn't vary too much from, like, what worked, which was a lot of side-scrollers. He did do 3D, but I thought it was, like, it was successful, and there was a lot. Of, I mean, if you really liked Gex, you got a lot of Gex. If you hated Gex, I don't know if you can mute Gex. But, I mean, that's the way it was. He was doing a lot of, like, tongue-in-cheek humor. I like mm. Gex. I like, I think like a lot of things, personality goes a long way. So I'm going with Gex. Bubsy, um, he's like, he's like a mascot that was on like, had a bad drug problem. A little (laughs) too erratic. The eyes are way too big. Um, Might have had to be talked down. Um, Yeah. So Bubsy's fine. He's okay. Uh, And he did that. That new game apparently was halfway decent. uh, But Bubsy 3D is like one of the most notorious games because obviously uh everybody was trying to beat out uh mario 64 and playstation's like what can we do i don't know do anything bubsy what do you got and bubsy didn't have a lot uh so that's we have that and then blinks i played the game um and i think a lot of people the fact that the second game was only released japan tells the tale that blinks didn't have much of a life i mean the cats have nine lives he had two lives uh, <laughs> so not great blinks and uh good concept but horrible execution horrible it's a bad game but i mean check it on game pass if you want to or just watch a video and and that if that uh satisfies your hunger for um cat mascots go right ahead so that's where i'm sticking uh but we do have one person who was brave enough in our chat to actually respond famous Seamus said mark by gex he's fun if he was around today there would be so much stuff for him to make fun of absolutely he's like the yeah. he's like the the social uh commentary of video gaming uh ren bubsy is he annoying yes absolutely 100 percent correct but i'm not gonna lie i think he could be fun with the right writing yes i don't know if bubsy ever said anything i don't know if he had any dialogue but maybe i remember yeah, like never said, never said much in the 2d side scroller <laughs> no i remember some sound effects like, uh, like yeah. wow kind of like yeah. that kind of stuff but like yeah i don't think like dialogue wise there's anything um i will say this check out the bubsy cartoon pilot you may regret that Seamus. uh so go from there um and then return blinks the gameplay of this game looks interesting but if you put him back besides another cat mascot there's not much unique about blinks absolutely Mm. he looks like he's dead in the eyes doesn't have much personality it's not like yeah what is that that one that um big city kitty game that just came out that looks very cute even uh stray very cute i don't know any other top cats you guys like that in media that's cute games meowth i mean I don't, think, I, don't <laughs> meowth, think, yeah. I don't think the catwoman game was very good when it came out i think that was halle berry's catwoman or something mm. oh yeah <laughs> yeah you're not helping, <laughs> you're not helping cats. So in, in that yeah. case i bought oh. like yeah <laughs> cat quest is supposed to be really fun so maybe that quest is cat fantastic injury. if you haven't my played son cat loved the quest. first two me too i haven't played the newest one but cat quest especially cat quest one was so so great so unique just like very cute um yeah go go play those and also play little kitty big city because that game was delightful and i will say this check out the gex three cutscenes where gex is hitting on a spy lady it's awesome (laughs) (laughs) so uh the next one, though, it's funny because the winner gamer, Brendan Myers, thank you, Brendan Myers, uh, he said he basically avoids the topic. Never played any of these games. So he's just like, <laughs> let's move on to a question. He says, where is the Echoes of Wisdom Amiibo? This will be the first Nintendo made Zelda right. game since Twilight Princess on the Wii U that we don't get an Amiibo for. What are some Nintendo games that you thought were a crime to not have gotten an Amiibo? What are your favorite top Amiibos that you owned? And which ones are your favorite design or favorite by design? Okay. Adam, Ooh. do you have any Amiibo? I got two Amiibos. I just pinned up on the wall tonight, actually. It's uh, two in the, in the box. Uh, yeah, they're still in the box, but it's two pixelated uh, Marios from like the OG, like Super Mario Bros. on the original Nintendo. So I got like the. The one where it's just like a, a red suit and the brown hair and like the brown sleeves. And then the next oh, yeah. one ha- actually has like the blue and the gold and the white gloves and stuff. So I just yeah. like how it's a pixelated uh, 3D look. Like I think they did that with uh, Link as well. Like they had like the... Yep. The Yeah, they had that pixelated 3D look. Yeah. 
Yeah. Those are amazing. Yeah. They're great amoeba. Keep talking. I'll be back in a second. I have I have something to show and tell. Oh. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Um for me, I, like I love those two as well. The world of like the pixelated graphics behind them. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, just got uh pixel graph. Um oh man, I'm trying to think of my favorite because I have I have a, a decent amount. I think for favorite amiibo, um I'm gonna have to say maybe Shovel Knight just for rarity and one of the few like third party random amiibo that like someone else did an amiibo took care of it like non-nintendo specific yeah, game cool. like shovel knight's available for everything it's not nintendo made and i love that character um so that's a really cool one in my collection but there's some of the zelda ones and to like brennan's question of like this will be the first like what's up with that echoes of wisdom i do love the little link amiibo from um the other game that looks just like this one Toon link no the little the little one that looks like he's from oh, this game um it. what's what's that game called link's awakening link's awakening thank you just completely blanked on that one for a second but i, I have that little link's awakening and i want a zelda to match that it would be so good and i i don't have it um so that's frustrating uh but i a crime to have not gotten an amiibo <sighs> that's a tough one um and favorite amiibo that i own i think yeah I, i've got to say shovel knight or maybe um man there's a few from the zelda line that i just love it's um, gotta be a pokemon mark that you love the pieces that you've never got well i mean like if we're gonna talk pokemon that i've not gotten an amiibo for there's there's one tattooed on my arm um so if i could get a nidoran amiibo i'd just you know retire happy but um yeah so I'll, that's a that's an easy answer i suppose but like are they realistically going to do pokemon amiibo and have all seven hundred and fifty thousand pokemon made into amiibo like i don't know if that's uh wildly realistic um can i can i kind of cheat an answer and say that I think it's a shame that we didn't get um, like an amiibo game. Yes. That that utilized yes. amiibo like like Disney Infinity or Lego, whatever the hell that version was called. Like we didn't get an amiibo game that you could scan an amiibo and that was like your game piece or the character that you were playing or something. Like just take all of these different amiibo, like all of the Smash Brothers character, whatever one, and you could be like, boop, here's the character I'm playing. Even if it was like a Mario Party style knockoff, like amiibo party. I know we got the amiibo party Animal Crossing game that doesn't count. Um, <laughs> I just, I think a, a game that just brought all of these in and let you do something with them. Rather than like the Smash Brothers, it was so cool to be able to scan your amiibo, but then it was like a computer controlled character or your save file to bring to a friend's house. Who cares? Yeah. I don't you know. know like, you know, like there was one thing that I had. It was like uh, I think it was I don't know if it was on the Wii U or whatever, but uh, you could scan in your uh, Mario amiibo and it would make Mario like a giant and then you could like run through the level yeah. and just smash everything I mean that was cool but yeah. but that that was it it was just like you you spent out like you bought that amiibo to do that one thing just a couple yeah. times and then you just put it on the shelf and that's it but yep. it would be cool if you could like you said incorporate them into something more or Breath of the yeah. Wild where you just scan a billion of them to get like meat and like weapons <laughs> Yeah, it's just and it kind of made. Trap. <laughs> yeah, it, it kind of started to make Breath of the Wild like you could scan all of your amiibo yes. once a day, and just like you never had to fish, you never had to hunt. Like uh, you'd get weapons. It was and a Costco shit. It was a Costco trip. It yeah yeah. So if you had the time and patience to scan in your amiibo, you were playing that game on easy mode. Um, Yes, which was right. was wild right like especially like and again incentive to kind of like spend more money on amiibo because the more you got the more you could scan in so you're sitting there with you know 15 zelda amiibo and you're just like beep, beep, <laughs> booping and it takes a couple minutes but you're 
basically playing on God mode because you've got unlimited health and armor and all this kind of shit and like Epona um, fully battle ready and ready to go. So um, I, it sounds like I got sick of scanning Amiibo in because all I wanted to scan them in for was the costumes. Cause it was like a, you know, one in whatever shot, like you scan in the wind waker Amiibo and you could get the hat one day and maybe the shirt the next day and the pants the next day. Um, but it never always dropped like that. You know, like you'd get a hat one day and then you'd get fish for three days in a row and then you'd get the hat again and like curse the stars and then like finally you'd get the pants a week later and be like, yes, I can almost dress up as the version of Link that I want to. Um, meanwhile, I'd just be scanning in, like leaving fish in a field somewhere, uh, like a maniac, just flopping these fish that I created. Making and just bait like, piles. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? There's, I guess. there's something about that that I don't like, though, in some circumstances, is when games are like play to win. I don't like that at yeah. all. Yeah. There's just people out there yeah. just spinning thousands of dollars like you said they're in god mode but it's like you know you're just there trying to grind through it and you're just getting annihilated by these people who just spent like a thousand bucks it's like you know, i just think mm-hmm. that kind of can ruin at least online games in some ways you know when it comes oh, absolutely. to like, uh, leveling up i guess your character so yeah, yeah there was a couple of games where the amiibo kind of like if you didn't have the amiibo you're you're actually missing out of the system that was wolf link in mm. um Twilight Princess, if you had that, it gave you new abilities and things, which were really cool. And also then the, uh, what was the uh, uh, Skyward Sword? The um, the Gullwing with uh, with Princess yeah, Zelda, Zelda. Allow you to automatically go up to the sky. So it was like, that just seems like a game mechanic that should be part of the game. Sorry, Nintendo. Yeah. And when you can't find the amiibo to buy, oh, that was like a yeah. kick in the nuts. Or if you're like Adam and you want to leave things in a box, you couldn't scan them in. Oh, yeah, because they're like, you have to hack opening your package to scan the damn thing. (laughs) Or or buy two copies of an Amiibo that you can't find one copy of. It's like, this is going to turn into an Amiibo rant. So let's get back. So, yeah. (laughs) Are there any any, um, other like games that you can think of that's a crime to not have Amiibo or characters that don't have Amiibo? Anyone that you oh, Mark. Like, instantly buy? I'm jumping on yours, though, but I'm, I've already created my perfect Amiibo game. So my game is going to be called Nintendo versus Minions. So it's going to basically going to be <laughs> it's going to be the Amiibo characters like the pixel art Mario that I have here. Woo, we love him. Um, and it's going to basically all of your Amiibo work. And it's a turn based RPG like Super Mario RPG. And but it's against all of the the Nintendo minions. So Goombas, Koopas could be like rogue Pokemon, Mark. I don't know. But you basically you, you have a party of three and you scan in the all the amiibo you want to be in your party. So it's like it doesn't make it horrible. Maybe they make some characters that if you don't own amiibo, you could do it. But obviously, why wouldn't you do that? But it, I think it could be a lot of fun. And then you could, um, and you get more Amiibo, you can join your party, you level up, they're very, but it's that mechanic I think works because it's not like it's going to be very hard, not a lot of animations, but I think it could work really well and be very fun. And I can imagine so many people would want to get in on that bandwagon from like RPGs and things like that. So that's my ideal one, Mark, because it's not saying you have to have a lot of Amiibo, at least you need three, probably. Maybe it comes with one in the pack. You can do it. I think that's a perfect game for it that works and it limits the amount of work they'd have to do because it's not like you'd have to have a billion move sets and things like that. It just basically comes. So that's my ideal Amiibo game that could have worked. I thought it would have been very cool, very value added. They get maybe Square to help them out with it or some other mm. RPG company. I think it would be amazing. But Amiibo versus if you're watching, those clowns from outer space. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> whatever. We, I mean, they brought in like uh, maybe yeah. minions, bring them in. We could have yeah. real minions versus, uh, you know, the rabbits, which are like the you know, stepchildren of the uh, weird creatures world. But uh, to Mark's point, uh, I will show off Russian YouTube. This is where the fun happens. The Shovel Knight Amiibo is amazing. There he is. Yeah, that's awesome. Yep. Uh, and my Amiibo survived my son, Mark. So watch out. Put them away. Chewing happened a little bit on my 
uh, Guardian Amiibo. <laughs> the legs are chewy. They move. Guardian Amiibo yeah. is pretty awesome. I mean, he's Pretty's, he can yeah. be posed many different ways. Uh, Rob the Robot. Whoever thought hell, who would make a Rob the Robot or Mr. What, what's his name? Mr. Uh, the guy from the uh, Game & Watch. Mr. Game & Watch. Mr. Whoever Game thought they'd Watch. make one of them. Yeah, yeah they made him. Those. So so Rob the Robot, he's there. Uh, once again, talked about those uh, 3D Zelda. Yes. Amazing. I love it. I love the yeah. pixel, the depth. It's amazing. And the last one is Little Boo. The little boo. I love glow boo. in the dark. He's amazing. I love him. Yep. Beautiful. Um, yeah, so there's some great amiibos out there. Uh, uh, obviously not like the the golden Mega Man, the weird golden Mario. I have that golden just, Mario. You do? It's worth three thousand yeah. dollars, right, Mark? <laughs> I will sell that instantly if someone wants to give me three thousand dollars. I will exactly. sell any amiibo on my shelf for three thousand dollars. <laughs> you have it, I just tell me. Let's let's go. Yeah. Uh Adam. <laughs> Is there any any amiibo that you would like to see or any kind of thing that you think is missing from the amiibo line? I'm not sure because like personally I've uh, tried to avoid that as much as I can because I know how much of a slippery slope that is. Uh so yeah. you know, I I I'll I'll buy an amiibo and I'll buy another one then, you know, next thing I've got 200 of them. And it's like, where do I put them? And I, like I said, I was moving around so much. I was like, something that you get is like this big every time you buy it. I was like, I can't do that in the past few years because it wouldn't fit anywhere. So uh, no. I've recently gone down a slippery slope of like uh, Hot Wheels. <laughs> so Hot Wheels, oh, wow. Hot Wheels and stuff. Yeah, but uh, mm. but yeah, no. That is Amiibo weird. Uh, oh, really? The, the, the reason that is weird is because I just found my Boo Amiibo. In a pile of my son's Hot Wheels toys. No, okay. <laughs> so Todd just showed off his Boo Amiibo, yeah, and you right. mentioned Hot Wheels, and I literally found that on Friday in a pile of Hot Wheels um, while we were looking to set up a Hot Wheels track from like the stairs through the living room and stuff. Maybe and that's what I just we need. opened a drawer trying to find more Hot Wheels, and there's yes. my little Boo Amiibo. We need a Hot Wheels unleashed Amiibo. That's what it is. Ooh. Oh shit! Yeah. Well, remember. So yeah. wait, wait. So do you remember the amiibos they did with um, Skylanders that were cars, superchargers, Skylanders, superchargers? There was a Donkey Kong. Right. There and was a Bowser, a Bowser yeah. uh, and they were tied to cars. So that's a weird one off if you have those, because I'm guessing a lot of people didn't buy those or maybe they did. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. They probably were some money. Maybe like. Yeah. The Hot Wheels ones could come with little track pieces too. So, like, if you collect different ones, oh, you could actually oh, yeah. physically put it together. Yeah, that'd be sick. Yeah, I love the fact that Hot Wheels, like I saw in the like my grocery store, they have new Hot Wheels, and it's like the Wonder Woman and her woman, Wonder Woman and her invisible jet. It's a Hot Wheel, and of course, it's like <laughs> she's sitting in a, a clear thing. But yeah, they have Mario Hot Wheels. They have, I mean, oh, yeah. Hot Wheels accepts everyone. So. And yeah. all those Mario Kart, Mario Kart and Hot Wheels, it's like a marriage made in heaven. I've got like I, I can't believe, like Batmobiles, but lately uh, Tony Hawk has been releasing like little Hot Wheel skateboards. So like I got Batman one, Back to the Future, Venom, like there's all these themed That's boards crazy. and stuff. It's it's pretty cool. Yeah. That's sick. That's amazing. Yeah, before the, we, the boards. Yeah. Oh, before we move on from this, I can't believe a uh, recent game just popped into my head because I was playing it this weekend. Um, Mario Wonder. I want a, an elephant Mario amiibo or statue oh, yeah. of some oh, sort. Yeah. Like, just just cool. give me that yeah. that cuteness. Yeah. Um, that thing's just that like, or all of those characters as as elephants because there's, you know, the Mario Peach, um, Luigi Toad. I think at least you know Mario before. B. What about Mario B yeah. from uh, from was it 3D World? No, Galaxy 3D. Mario B from uh, Galaxy. Galaxy. Yeah, Galaxy. Um, like for, for recent games, yeah, Nintendo has really dropped the ball on on any kind of new amiibo, of course. But um, but yeah, the Elephant Mario is so instantly iconic, and I think would have made a, a great one. But uh, I think but one that maybe like I might regret that I never got. I think like the pixelated Mario's that I got, like the that pixelated Link. I, I'm pretty sure they made a pixelated Galaga ship, didn't they? 
Ooh. as an amiibo. I don't remember that. If they did, that'd be amazing. I love I'm that. I thought cool. they did, but if they didn't, they should. And yeah, I that's probably like the next one I would buy. So yeah. I love Galaga. Yeah, and that's like a Pac Man. I sold my Pac Man amiibo, so I'm very oh, happy. Yeah. I'm very proud of him. Yeah. Uh, well, very good. There's amiibo we i think we've talked about amiibo more than nintendo has in the last <laughs> five years so good for us and thank you nintendo we've given you all these ideas go to town i'll be curious to see if they bring keep amiibo on for the next switch system so now it's time to talk about what we've been gaming so adam what's on your menu of what you've been gaming man lately uh me and my friend have been getting you know, a little intoxicated every now and then. And we'll jam out some Michael Jackson's Moonwalk around the arcade. Oh, man. Like, well, on the arcade. Yeah, Is that yeah. different than the Genesis version? Oh, yeah. It's, it's, I never played the Genesis version, but I have looked at it online before. And I think there's probably some differences. But uh, the arcade version is just like epic. Uh, like, uh, well, on that, where it's a main arcade. It's free quarters, so you can do a full playthrough, no problem. And uh, it's like you're Michael Jackson, and you're just walking around like zapping people with with your arms out. It's like you shoot like these zappy things at them, and uh, you have like a bomb, like you know, in games when you just have like a like two or three bombs you can use. Well, same thing with Michael Jackson, except for he just starts dancing if you hit the button, and all the enemies will start dancing. If there's enemy robots, they'll start dancing. They all do this big thing with spotlights. And then when the song's over, everyone just explodes. <laughs> so just like, <laughs> and then like, there's a monkey running around. And if you, is it bubbles? Well, yeah, if you, yeah, if you, if you, if you walk into the monkey, you turn into a Terminator, Michael Jackson, and you're just a giant Michael Jackson robot, just going around blasting everyone away. And it's kind of weird. Cause like you have to go save the children and stuff, but it's it's a hilarious game. If you never played that on the arcade, like amazing. Oh, yeah. I need to check. I might out. have, I might have played it on the arcade, but I remember on the Genesis. I played on the Genesis as well, and I love the music. And obviously, the Genesis is very limited. From a yeah. uh, is the arcade like full samples of like the music or like yeah. close enough? No, it's like um, it's not really singing, but it'll it'll have like the music and like kind of like a. I don't know, like a 16 bit kind of sound, I guess. Um, but it'll have the Michael Jackson scream. So it'll be like, it'll go like, but dim, 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 wow. And like, you'll just like, do a yeah, like that kind of stuff is in it, right? Yeah. Mark, do you have a Michael Jackson impression you'd like to do? <laughs> there you go. As much as you're getting right now. Did you ever see the Siri, Moonwalker Siri movie? just answered that. What? Uh, no. It's there is a moon. Yeah. There is basically That's a Moonwalker cool. movie with Michael Jackson. Similar. Pro, it's basically <laughs> what the game was based on. It's very weird. Michael saves the children. Uh, yeah, it's just it's, it's, smooth, it's the world of a smooth criminal. <laughs> yeah, it's just like as eighties as you can get. It's it's hilarious. Or nineties. It probably came out in the nineties. I don't know. But uh, yeah, um, all this year, I. I guess some games I've been playing, like mod more modern ones, was I've been getting into some Hogwarts Legacy recently. Um, Good game. Oh man, it's just so in depth, and it's just so, it's just so well done. Like you, you just get a burst in it, and uh, you know, uh, same with like Breath of the Wild. I've been playing that, getting really immersed in that too. Um, uh, what systems do you have currently? Uh, I just got an Xbox One X, so like the older. Version. Oh really? So you're yeah. still on last gen? Okay. Yeah, and uh, I'm a huge emulator, obviously, <laughs> by the mm -hmm. Batman channel. So um, I emulate all kinds of stuff on the Asus ROG Ally. So, like, my ally is mostly, like, Xbox Game Pass um, mm -hmm. and, like, emulating old stuff. Like I was talking about, I think it's Emudic that has emulation. Oh, yeah. Stuff. Like, I'll, they, it has everything up to, like, I think it has up to Xbox 360 emulated and, like, maybe we like with the dolphin emulator and stuff and like yeah. GameCube. but um i think you can emulate up the playstation 3 so like wow. as far as new consoles go um just asus rgli uh the xbox uh but i do have like a ton of retro handhelds now like uh because you know companies are sending me them to review them and uh you know so i have a boatload of those so lately i've been really addicted to playing uh 
retro games on those and through Wi-Fi, I got them linked to the retro achievements website. So like I'll nice. be playing an old game, like you could play Bubsy or something like that. And you know, little achievements will pop up on the screen while you're, while you're playing them. So it's a little bit addicting kind of thing. Yeah. So I do have a question about that because I know once you get into retro handhelds, you've got like 85 versions of like games. They're everywhere. So it's like, I've heard there's ways to get like cloud saves as well. So it's like, it feels like you don't have to start over every time you can kind of save your progress. Is that, is that real? Is that still being like managed? Yeah. So a good example of that is I just put up a full guide on MUOS uh, for the RG 35 XX handhelds. So those connect through Wi-Fi. Um, So you can, connect that to a piece of software called sync thing so Mm. basically what sync thing does is i can have the handheld and i'll i'll play my game and when i save it through wi-fi it'll send my save file to my computer and save it on my computer um and recently uh i seen there's like a gigantic youtube channel uh, retro game course um he just released a video showing how you can link multiple devices through sync things. So what I'm going to do now is um, with Emu deck and, and my Asus ROG Ally and all my old emulators there, I'm going to connect that the sync thing as well to my computer. So like my, my handhelds and my Asus ROG Ally can all, you know, be linked together. So it's very real. It's very awesome. Um, you can even play like multiplayer on retro games now. So like, yeah, like oh, that's we awesome. Play, we could play two player Contra online through uh, RetroArch and stuff like that. Like they're awesome. doing wild, wild stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I love that because it becomes an addiction with like, oh, I got got to get this new system because it's got like one extra analog stick or it's got this or it does that yes. or it can do yeah. another system. So it just gets frustrating. Like, well, am I going to just start my 13th play of Mario? 64 on another device or can i just play the same game because obviously that's the goal is like not to start over and actually make some progression in your game so that's good to hear the thing is you got you've got to choose your core that you're using so like if you play like link to the past on super nintendo nintendo using a certain core to run that game if you play link to the past on another console on a different core that save file might not work with that so it's like it's a little tangly that way yeah, and and if you have questions about that, the cores are kind of like the 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 uh, emulator that it runs on, plus yeah. also the uh, some of the things. There's there's a lot there. I, I'm a novice, quite honestly, but there's so much to it because there's many um, emulators for my, uh, Super Nintendo, other systems as well, and so um, it's changing and it's amazing how well it's doing. So um, mm-hmm. obviously, the ROM piece is a little bit. We don't talk about the ROMs. I don't know. We only really talk about the systems. Oh. So that will get people in trouble. But we talk about the the systems. Yeah. So we, we talk about the systems. You can do it. And uh, if you own the games, there's ways to get those games. So yeah. that's awesome. And, uh, you know, I would say this, the, the ROG Ally, that's a great system to play all the Xbox games because you can buy them on Steam. You can play on Game Pass. So it's a great system for, uh, and also then PlayStation, a lot of PlayStation 5 games are now on and PlayStation games are now on Steam too, which you can do the, through the Rog Alley. And I think Steam is also putting out a Steam OS yes. for other devices too. So if you just want the Steam OS on a Rog Alley, I think that's something that's coming out too. So man, yeah. handheld gaming for PCs is becoming amazing. Yeah, and you can dual boot in the Steam OS too when it comes out, so you don't have to just do that. Like you can just go back into Windows 11 if you want. Yeah. That's so awesome. It's gonna be awesome. I know the Steam Deck is is not at that point yet, but they have Windows drivers now for the Steam Deck. But the Asus Rog Alley is essentially a Windows system, so dual booting is amazing. So we're getting there, I think, to the point where if Xbox eventually gets serious about this whole gaming handheld, they'll make an Xbox OS. Yeah. For mm. a handheld, maybe. Yeah, I uh, yeah that whole Game Pass thing where the like you can play Game Pass on your phone, like on the Android stuff, like uh, on iPhone 15, like through uh, streaming, right? Yeah, so like, I they're kind of all like they're they're getting into their own handheld markets in certain in different ways. Um, it's exciting to see. It's it's just like last year it seemed like the handheld market has just exploded. So like within the next couple of years, 
what we're going to get, like what we're talking about now might be like us talking about dial up versus Wi Fi. You know what I mean? Like, in, <laughs> yeah. It's sort of like yeah. A, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, very good. We're going to get into more retro talk at the end of this show in the bonus rounds. Don't worry about them, folks. We've got a lot to talk about. But with that, thank you so much. I love the fact of what you're doing. Uh, But Mark, uh, I guess we're going to make into retro. (laughs) We can still talk a little bit about retro (laughs) because I've been playing this, uh, which is my new new, uh, retro handheld. Um, So this is my RG35XXSP, which... um, Mercy, they've uh, they, they've got some naming Ooh. conventions. That's yours. Watch Here's my original on our YouTube folks. Uh, Look at this. This is my original uh, Game Boy Advance SP. This is the NES edition. Uh, for anyone watching oh. you, I really want to get some like stickers for this and make it look uh, the same and, and stick yeah. that some skins or something like that. Uh, I spotted a couple on Etsy, so I might have to just like pull the trigger and get that. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I've been playing a little bit of this through the weekend and uh, my brother, I think, is convinced to order one. Um, and I'm very excited to test exactly what Adam was just talking about, which is like playing multiplayer, linking up and being able to play some like Mario Golf or Contra or Battletoads Double Dragon or something like through two of these devices, which uh, like my original RG35XX didn't have like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth anyway to really hook up and sync up that way. So I loved this device, but when I found out that there's like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and that clamshell design that now I can throw this in my pocket and not worry about just absolutely demolishing a screen. Um, this is like a perfect handheld for me. It's a little chunkier than like the original SP, but like if you're not holding them side to side, you're not actively comparing them. Um, this feels very, very similar. Very, very like yeah, on like point. What I, like what I liked was like, now we're grown adults. Our hands are a lot bigger too. So yeah. you know, I like that it's a little bigger because it's Me a too. more comfortable, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I completely agree. Um, and I will just touch on one point that um, before before we jump into the, the next thing. Um, that's the one thing for me is, is these, you, you mentioned like these are going to feel like a, a dial up kind of thing, like compared to like, you know, modern Wi-Fi and that kind of stuff. And I am feeling this a little bit because I have to update the firmware on this. I'm running a couple of firmware things back, mm-hmm. right. From when I ordered it to what's out now. So I saw on the Ambernick website that there's a new firmware version and it supports like I think better sleep when you close the lid or something like that, puts it into a deeper sleep mode. So it doesn't drain the battery as much. Um, And it there's, there's no over the air update. And I know MUOS just released an update where it's, you don't have to completely wipe the card. You can kind of insert the update into the card. And it feels like that's where it feels like we're right there for an over the air update. Um, But it's, it's not quite there yet even yeah, directly from Ambernick, let alone putting on these other um, things. And like you said, you can get, and I just set up my retro achievements today. So that's, you know, oh, that nice. I, I finally have that on, on here too. Um, you know, I, I haven't done the, the save sync, which I think is going to be interesting because I do have RetroArch on my computer, on my phone. So being able to do that save sync, I'm going to try that. I'm going to follow along with yeah, the video. So- yeah, the thing about it is, like, I don't know if the Stack OS supports sync thing or not. I don't think it okay. does. But the, the thing about MUOS is right now, in its current state, the only thing you're going to lose if you decide to go with that custom firmware instead is uh, Bluetooth. So you won't be able to use Bluetooth yet because it's like okay. this thing. It's it's hard to get Bluetooth set up on third-party software or something like that, mm-hmm. but uh, they're working on it. It's on their list of things to do. They'll, they'll I saw it. that. But, yeah, I was checking out their but, roadmap today. Yeah. It's, so, yeah. Uh, I, I'm and I was going to say, it's amazing that these devices are... We're not talking about $500 devices. We're talking like oh. devices that are it's under $100. Hundred yeah. dollars. Everything and it's amazing. It's pretty much under $100. Like, you know, yeah. It's like I'm scrutinizing them. For different stuff but it's like at the end of the day i mean what we're getting for that price is amazing yeah 
Yeah. Um, and I owned the uh, Ambernick RG three five three PS, so that was the more like like an SCNS controller. I ended mm-hmm. up selling mine because I got a Logitech. Uh, G Cloud, I won, which is like for me, that takes care of all my emulation needs. I just got to get it set up right. Mine's an Android system. So that's one of the bigger things we'll talk about is basically mm-hmm. Android, Linux, all these fun things and all the capabilities. So, um, yeah. but Mark is in heaven because um, he's been loving this, like these old handheld formats that he can play all these cool new games. And mm-hmm. you're basically going to get either the analog controls or maybe you're going to get the digital controllers, multiple analog sticks, all these different like form factors, which is mm-hmm. just so much fun um, yeah. versus the original hardware where, I mean, I had the own the I own the original GBA hardware, which had no backlit screen. So I went yeah. to somebody that yeah, installed yeah. the what would they call it, the uh, oh, I can't remember the, the name of the uh, the mod where it added a backlit screen. I sent it to a dude back in 2000 early and he did it and sent it back to me. I'm like, I was essentially playing roulette if I ever get my system back, but it was so much better. I need like the worm light. I didn't need like a billion yeah. magnifying glasses to see it. And yeah. yeah, that was a bad part. Of it. Yeah. Classic yeah. under the bed sheet with the flashlight scenario. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Play it in the day. Don't play it in the dark. Cause like, Oh, what are you going to do? That's, that's um, how yeah. I played this thing, man. It was like yeah. the ring light plugging into here, the, the, or the worm light plugging into there. Um, yep. that was, that you ever was see like those, uh, those memes of like game boys or game boy colors, like in their final form. And it looks yeah. like <laughs> the magnifying glass <laughs> speakers. Yeah. yeah fantastic yeah, it's like the it's like the old genesis with like 32x the tower of power where it has like all those things that are connecting like oh, man. what have yeah, we done it's so, it's so crazy you say that because on the mini the mini sega genesis consoles um you can get all those attachments they don't do anything but but no. you can do that to your minis now too and i wanted to buy that but it's like 400 bucks or something i was like I don't know, but yeah. I don't know if i can justify doing that but it's it's just so cool and nostalgic i guess that's what it is Got to be able to yeah, 3D print that one. That's that's my go-to for everything. It's like, I could 3D print that. I, I could. Yeah, exactly. So and, some and unfortunately, we're over. And they are still making mini consoles, but I mean, that's kind of, it, it kind of lost its steam after the, what, the, the mini SNES and the and mini see, that's uh, PlayStation. One of the reasons that I'm excited for this and Bluetooth support, which is why I'm I'm hesitant to go uh, MIUI-OS, yeah. is you can plug this in hdmi out right there and yeah i could set up a bluetooth controller and essentially have yeah. this as a mini game system and one of the new updates is you can close yeah. the thing and, and and play it that way um and it, it's a it's a retro console with all the games that i love and this thing will run like an n64 and that kind of stuff but it doesn't have dreamcast buttons to run an n64 game so you have to find some workarounds but i think with yeah. a controller I think that would work a little bit better. So there's still, I'm still yeah. learning some stuff with this, but yeah, it's, it's impressing me. Will it support two can, will it support two controllers? Yep. So it, yeah. yeah. So the best thing to do is, uh, you know, like when you turn on the device, you get two menus. There's one, there's, I think it's uh game rooms. And then the second one's RA game. Yeah. So RA, RA game is running your games through RetroArch. So, yeah. um, what I do is like, uh, this will be set up as, uh, this will be all set up. All these buttons and stuff will be set up as port one in RetroArch. So, uh, and port one will be set up as player one. So if I want to put a, blue, a couple of Bluetooth controllers for this, if I want to play on a TV with somebody, um, I'll set those two controllers up as port two and port three. And then I'll set port two and three up as player one, player two. And then I'll set this up as like player three. So it's a bit of a tangly workaround, but uh, yeah, you can play like up to the four players and stuff. Yeah. Well, it's better than the old name on PC where I grew up as a yeah, kid. Oh, it was bad to do that stuff. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, uh. So aside from some retro games, I was checking out uh, Vampire Survivors on Apple Arcade, which comes with all the DLC and all that kind of stuff. And uh, that inspired more Vampire Survivors on Switch with um, first time I ever played that multiplayer was uh, mm-hmm. my brother and my nephew and uh, my son even got in on it a little bit, just kind of watching the mayhem and stuff on the screen. So that was kind of fun to all gather around and do, uh, do multiplayer with Vampire Survivors, couch co-op like back in the day, which was really, really mm-hmm. cool. Um, and then I've been jumping in a little bit to Fortnite Chapter 5 Season 4 
which is another Marvel season. I hardly played the last season. I barely finished the battle pass and it was a big crunch like the last week to just like finish the battle pass. Um, but this one, it's Marvel. I love my Marvel stuff. The whole battle pass is all Marvel things. Uh, Dr. Doom has taken over a lot of the map and there's like trophies and he's killed stuff. Todd's destroying his whole setup. Um, but Dr. Doom, basically like you can go through his like doom mansion or whatever. And he's got like, like, uh, he's killed the silver surfer and has got a piece of his surfboard. He's got moon Knights, uh, one of his crescent throwing moon things. Um, he's got like Mr. Fantastic, like stuck in a ball. Um, and, and, I think the things turn into a throne. Like it's just crazy. Dr. Doom's just going nuts. Um, So it's very fun. I've played like maybe three or four matches so far. And then I went away for the weekend. So um, early on, but I'm a sucker for Marvel stuff when they bring it in Fortnite. So, um, so I'm, I'm jumping back into Fortnite a little bit and, uh, and, and hopefully playing more this season. So if you're still playing Fortnite, if you're jumping back in, like I have after a few lapsed seasons, uh, hit me up. Let's let's go uh, take on Doctor Doom. Todd, uh, I'm curious, Mark. After all of the D23 stuff, and they talked brought up Minecraft again. They did uh, D23 through my, Minecraft as well. Um, I am curious to see where that goes next because I know they mounted yeah. their deal about a year ago, about you know four million dollars or whatever for for mm-hmm. Disney in Minecraft. I am curious to see what it is because uh, you know Unreal can make games of all types. And I would like to see Disney properties not just be shooting people with weapons Mm -hmm. and doing really cool adventure modes and stuff like that. Dreamlike Valley could probably be done in Fortnite engine, the Unreal. So I am curious for that because I am just not into the whole just running around shooting people that look like Deadpool. I want (laughs) to see like real games made that like are not saying real games. It's not a real game. I'm just saying more traditional other styles of games within uh, Fortnite Dude, with those properties. I think one, it'd be of amazing. The, one of the fun things they did the end of last season was they just dropped fall guys into the Fortnite map. Mm-hmm. So you could fall on the Fortnite map. And then in the yeah. like top corner was a fall guys thing. And when you fell on it, you turned into a little fall guys bean and you ran through the obstacle course. And then the faster you finished it, the better guns and stuff you got at the end. So that was always my first drop when I was trying to finish this season, I'd go down there run through the fall guys thing it was perfectly emulated fall guys inside an active Fortnite battle map and then i just got like a little reward of like a couple of guns and shit and go on my merry way it was wild like and they they skinned a lot of them not every single character but a lot of the skins like if you drop down as i mean let's say captain america like your little fall guys bean would have like a captain America shield on or whatever. And like just run through the course. So like the integration is wild and you're, you're spot on. Like they can make so many games within that engine and within that world that I'm, I'm really curious what they do with that Disney partnership. Disney infinity, Disney Lego stuff, uh, Lego, uh, what what was Lego dimensions dimensions. I mean, all those things could re be repurposed, for all ages versus just gunplay. I think that'd be amazing. And then make your own levels, do all that fun stuff. I think could live really well in Minecraft or sorry, in Fortnite, um, because I think it's just an area to play with. It becomes a, it's if Fortnite is a world that is capable of many things. It's the metaverse. It is all things, all franchises. So I am excited to see what they do versus just pay. Cause as we know, Fortnite started off as a uh, different type of thing before it ever became the Battle Royale. So it's not it's in its it's not in its end state at all. It is constantly evolving, has billions of dollars. So very cool uh, for me. Um, I went on a trip. I was on a plane. I, I was like trying to figure out what I could do with certain things from a mobile aspect. Uh, I've had some issues with my Logitech G Cloud to do. Uh, a lot of the retro stuff. Not sure why I'm getting like it does. It stalls out. Uh, it has issues. I'm like, okay, well, can I do like the Netflix stuff? Because uh, Netflix has gaming that you download. Unfortunately, if you don't have a connection, like my plane did not have a Wi-Fi connection, I can't play those games. So it's very frustrating. So I'm like, well, I'll just 
take my handy old Switch. That does not require an online connection for the game I'm playing, which is Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. It's a pleasure. It's so much fun. I love it. It's great. It's obviously an, a 3DS game. They ported it up, but I never really got into it on the 3DS because I didn't love the control scheme. I have big sticks on my uh, uh, my Switch because I use the... Uh, uh, I can't remember the name of them they're just like the third party big big handles they're great oh, i love it right. works awesome yeah they're they're amazing uh and i love it and it's been a great game i am halfway through and just having a blast with that it's a little different than luigi's mansion 3 in regards to it's more level based than it is like a yeah. fully open experience mm-hmm. but i am enjoying it I'm, I'm having a great time um so i'm hoping to finish that soon because i gotta uh, clear up a space for my game fly q to get my uh that's already reserved is my uh, outlaws game uh so mm, star wars outlaws sure. is coming in a couple of weeks so i gotta return one game the other game i'm playing so i will probably get that done game done but college football 2025 playing on xbox uh series x um obviously in canada you don't care about college football in the u.s because it doesn't matter uh we talked about this mark i talked about your college ex- uh, football experience uh doesn't really exist it's more about soccer where you went to school um so adam i don't know college football does that have any interest to you at all in canada uh, i'm really good at cod fishing so, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so for now, me now, you know what we we did almost have a football team i think at one point and a wrestling yep. team and i was going to join both but they just didn't do it uh so no it wasn't really a thing we played hockey and baseball growing up so i mean i love mlb pa baseball and say genesis <laughs> you know no no and, i totally get it uh, yeah, like I mean, where i went to school yeah. michigan state has a really good hockey team they're they're usually better at that than they are football but um but I love college football. It's like it's like a religion in the United States. A lot of fo- a lot of yeah. folks in the U.S. don't have a professional team to root for, so they love their local sports yeah. team. So that's college. Myself, I'm playing my Michigan State Spartans, and uh, I'm just loving it at this point. I'm playing it rookie mode. I'm playing it the the easiest mode. I'm having a great time. I'm in the football championships, and I'm having a great time. I don't oh, care if I suck, man. but I'm having a good time. I tried at a higher level, and that was horrible. I didn't enjoy getting destroyed, so I'm doing it this way. So I'm having a good time. I will probably finish my season d- undefeated because I'm playing at the easiest difficulty. Don't hate at me. It's the only way my team will ever win anyways because we don't have the money. Uh, you know what? Corruption. Sorry. You, were, you reminded me of something uh, with Luigi's Mansion 2. I actually did own a 3DS, and I think I had new super mario bros 2 on it where you collect like a billion coins but i also had luigi's mansion 2 i'm pretty sure and uh i specifically remember the last midnight release that i went to eb games to or like gamestop or whatever um it was probably for like a call of duty or a battlefield or something but i remember we me and my buddy chad brought our 3ds's and chairs so we sat in the mall in these chairs playing Luigi's Mansion 2 on our 3DS is waiting for this midnight release. I think that's like the last midnight release I got to go to, but I missed that so much. It's just when you were talking yeah. about that, I was like, oh man, yeah. It's amazing. Those, yeah, they don't have midnight releases with the 3DS was like midnight releases and midnight like showings. Talking about like Marvel and stuff. Oh yeah. I remember bringing my 3DS to like Marvel midnight release movies, like MCU movies early on. They were also other like, impromptu like Mario Kart tournaments with like other yeah. geeks waiting in line with 3DSs. Man, that was like peak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's. I remember when my son was in soccer, I would be playing uh, my my DS or 3DS uh, when he was doing soccer, and I was like, oh, okay, I see what they're doing. They're not doing anything cool. So I was playing like. <laughs> Link Between Worlds, I was playing Mario, I was playing Luigi's Mansion, so definitely it's not bad parenting. I was obviously engaged. It's just, you can only take that so much as a parent sometimes. It's like, okay, yeah, uh, it's not very exciting. Oh, well, uh, Mark, don't listen to me. Engage with your son. Don't take anything. Look at the screen all the time with your son. Um, yeah, he with he that, pointed to this today and said, we can share this, but it's mine. Yes. It isn't like his. <laughs> So he's our. Oh, this is, is already his curb. This is already his Kirby machine, and I can borrow it for Mario Golf when he's not using it. So that's I gotta change oh, that real quick. 
glad to see the 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 rules of the roost have changed oh, yeah. uh so with that we're done with what we've been gaming we got to get into our bonus round which is all about retro gaming so i feel like we've kind of been talking about retro gaming we, quite a bit dabbling. i want to exactly so i'm gonna oh my goodness boo you just died okay uh if you're watching on youtube anyways you're getting all of this wonderful video excitement me playing around with different uh amiibo uh and they may fall they may die i don't know we'll see what happens okay he's there okay boo stay there okay yeah there we go um so with retro gaming the question is what really is retro gaming and i would say it's kind of like classic cars Classic cars are anything older than 20 years post-release. So if we think about retro gaming, then it's anything post-2004, gentlemen. Yep. That's yeah, scary. I, I, yeah, yeah. It's uh, one, th- one thing I've always thought about it is like, uh, if you look at it from an individual standpoint, you'll have a bias in some way. Um uh, but if you look at the general public and like the market of, you know, used games, you know, from the seventies up until now or whatever, um, that the market can usually tell you kind of what's sort of hitting people's nostalgia that's retro on a, on like a mass scale versus individual. So like mm-hmm. a good way to, to think about that, I guess, is like say original Xbox. You could go buy any original Xbox game you wanted for like a dollar or two dollars because nobody wanted them. And then after so many years, then all the prices just start skyrocketing and you got these special ones that are hundreds of dollars and like, you know, and it's just like this big nostalgic wave that hits. So that that just that rolls over. And like to me, I don't know if that's quite hit like the six, seven gen, like the 360. I don't know if it's gone that far yet for nostalgia mm-hmm. but like like the original xbox for me is retro but like i wouldn't call the 360 retro if that makes sense so that. yeah so Just, should we should we do a caveat on retro meaning is it is it a gaming system that you cannot easily play now is it the best way to define retro i think so but i, I think that's also a weird kind of like Cause yeah, yeah, you can't really break it down by generation because Xbox has done such a good job at preserving generations, and a lot of the games get remade. So, like, let's go with your classic car example. So, some quick, rapid fire, twenty year old games. These games came out in two thousand four: Halo Two, Half Life Two, uh, GTA San Andreas, Far Cry, um, Doom Three, Jack Three. Um, was it uh, Red Dead Revolver, Metroid Prime 2, Metroid Zero Mission, which feels way older than like a GameCube game for some reason. Like it's, it's that, that's blowing my mind right now for some stupid reason. Um, maybe because it's Game Boy Advance and it's, it's more retro, like 16 bit style rather than like a 3D modern ish looking game. I don't know, but there's something about it. Like I think GameCube games, I have this weird nostalgia for those that I wish I could play them more actively. I wish I could play them easier. And that's something like when I look at this, I kind of wish it could do N64 and GameCube. And I'm looking at other handhelds of like, this is great for quick on the go Game Boy Advance games and, and the like Game Boy games, whatever. Um, but I'm I'm already I just got this last week and I'm already looking at other handhelds because I'm like this can sort of do N64. I dabbled in Super Mario 64 with this and it's not satisfying me. I dabbled in Wave Race a little bit with this and it's passable until you hit certain points and then I'm like okay I need something with more buttons I need something with a little bit more power and if I'm going to go more power I want something that can run GameCube. Because I can't get that. I have a GameCube, but you can't really go and search it. Or like Adam said, the games are starting to get crazy expensive. There's that demand for them that some of them are hard to get. Some of them are a little tougher. So, but at the same time, you look at what a, what else was out at that time. And a lot of the Xbox stuff, it's on Game Pass. It's easy to get. It's so like the same time frame. It's not like 
you know, classic cars where it's just a year. It's like by console, by company and, and just availability. So it's, it's, it's so hard to define. Yeah. I've always thought of it as like uh, a gray area that moves yeah. with time. So like, like, you know, you got the beginning of, of games and then, you know, more and more come out, years go by, years go by, years go by. And it's like, it almost seems the bigger that timeline gets, like there's a little gray area or maybe a white gray area that moves along with it, with generations of gamers that like people will argue, is it retro or is it not? basically yeah. so yeah. that's the thing is like you can i can look at someone and be like you know what um n64 is such a retro gaming system and people are like yeah you know <laughs> uh but if i say hey you know the wii is a retro system then people some people might be like yeah i mean that's pretty old now i mean so many classic but then other people would be like what that that's like a yeah modern 3d game what are you talking about so that's in yeah. that gray area right like you can't call uh an asus rgli a retro console because it's not right <laughs> but there's those right. ones in the middle in that gray area where it's like mm -hmm. you'll have the arguments right so yeah it's and a it's hard thing to define and it's so hard even if you go by rarity or whatever that can be tough too because of uh let's say legal emulation or approved emulation or whatever. So I'm thinking of something like Nintendo switch online. Yep. If they add an N64 and some of the best N64 games, then there's not for me anyway, not as much of a reason to go find an emulator machine that can play N64 games because I have yep. my switch. That's yep. fine. I even have an N64 controller I can hook up to my switch. Yep. So then it becomes is there something missing from another catalog that's either older or again, in some cases newer because Nintendo's not releasing emulators. There's no N64, there's no GameCube switch online. So, you know, for, for my purposes, I'm more nostalgic for some of the GameCube stuff than I am N64 stuff, even though GameCube's newer I have more of that nostalgic retro yeah. itch to play some of those games because they're not as actively readily available at my fingertips. So it's really, really, really yeah. weird. So I think Nintendo is really smart with that because people had that itch for N64 and like, uh, you know, PSP and uh, Dreamcast, like these kind of things. And uh, mm -hmm. that's why now nintendo was like okay we're if if people are putting out these handhelds that can do that people are buying them up let's get in on that market and let's put n64 games uh, and super nintendo games online on our store but not the gamecube ones yet because the people in a couple of years are going to be like oh there's all these handhelds out that can do gamecube with the dolphin emulator so they're going to mm -hmm. want to go buy those but nintendo will be like or you could you know, buy this. I think Nintendo's going along with that wave of nostalgia that I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. It, it will be interesting because at this point, I think Nintendo feels there's a lot of value still in GameCube, mm -hmm. as we've seen. Yeah. They are perfectly fine with making you pay full price for maybe a remake. Yeah, we've seen yeah. It with uh, Metroid Prime, uh, we have seen that, and, and we've seen also weird options with the uh, Mario Three uh, collection, which sucks yeah. because they don't offer it online. You can only buy it physical, and I'm not sure if any versions there for like the the Galaxy and and uh, Mario uh, Sunshine and games like that. So it's yeah, it's it's like more. Nintendo wants to take advantage of those, but they're not doing it in a way that I feel like fully satisfies their customer base yeah. so it's like at that point it's like yeah well nintendo are you gonna go back and do something with these and while they skew piracy totally get it they're also not uh satisfying the audience that wants to play those games because not they're they're not offering a way for you to play those games it's not like you're gonna go back and say i want to buy a gamecube plus all those old games you go bankrupt mm -hmm. because yeah. they're they're not that 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 frequent um, and they're doing very little to satisfy those customer base. 
and they haven't said how they're going to approach that, then maybe we'll get with the next Switch, Nintendo Switch Online GameCube Edition. Yeah. Um, and that's fine because, I mean, these games are now 20 odd years old. And at this point, can they really charge full price for, you know, 20 to 30 to $40 games, $40 for games they don't actually touch? It's just a ROM. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I guess the question is if they want to invest and do like what Capcom has been doing, which is their remakes or Metroid Prime, which is $40 for a remaster. That's cool too, but th- I think I think for Nintendo to be just like blind to everything and do nothing is just silly. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's going to be a conundrum, of course. Uh, I was looking at Xbox uh, for just context. So Xbox backwards compatibility is not great. The original OG, it's like yeah. thirty oh, games. Yeah. It's like yeah. that's it. So that's so it's like you think of like all those old games that are just like set to die, and yeah. the Xbox three hundred and sixty store just went offline yeah. so you can buy some games uh but the 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 the, the i think that the the golden goose is the uh licensed games mm. that they lose their uh license they can't sell those games even modern games like i think it's forza horizon 4 is going to be delisted yeah. because of yeah. like car licenses and things like that so yeah. the licensing is still like the biggest issue because there's some great licensed Marvel games that you can't buy. The uh, X Men Origins game on 360 and PS3, it's an amazing game. They had a great time, or even the the Deadpool game uh, that we had just the big Deadpool movie that came out. Where was Activision saying with that now Microsoft owns? We need to fix this license. Let's do it. We've got a billions of dollars. We're the biggest company in the world. Why can we not get this license figured out to get this games either on Game Pass or just for sale on mm-hmm. modern systems? It's yeah. a huge miss. I yeah. love the Buffy the Vampire Slayer games. It's a licensed series. They're not going to get the new license on that. So I have to play it old school with a Xbox 360 with Xbox One cap, uh, Xbox OG compatibility, or I do it emulation. I own those games, but that's just a it's I, I feel like at this point there's just a barrier to entry for the normies. We can do it, but a lot of people mm-hmm. are not willing to go down that path. So I, I just worry that sometimes like what's the path? And so that's where we look to people like that pixel for like what's a good path there. So yeah. that brings us kind of like what's the best way to play? Yeah. these games and what is the the, the barrier to entry because uh, i know xbox there used to be like ways to do xbox series s and x like you could actually download the emulators and do that and now they've kind of put that behind the the, the, the wall uh behind their mode there's like devices like this that i have there's uh lots of emulated games systems and things like that so if you were a newbie saying i want to play these old cool games how do i do it and how is it painless and cheap? Yeah. What would you so, recommend? So really the best way to do it is to um, either buy or install something that does it all for you. Um, so the reason why these are so popular is because you just buy them and play them. Like you don't have to do much with it. And uh, that's the best way to go. Uh, I wouldn't suggest, you know, uh, someone who's a newbie to emulation just to be like, yeah, so you should go download uh, RetroArch itself and then uh, go get all the BIOS files and the ROMs and, like, you know, the emulator to get the cores all set up. But, like, that'd be ridiculous, right? So I think one of what, what we're seeing now is, like, a trend of everything will be done for you. Like, MUOS or, you know, or MuOS, uh, what, like, that software, uh, when you download that, um, it has everything set up for you. All you have to do is add your games. And if adding your own games is too complicated, um, then you can just, you know, buy something like this that just comes all good to go, right? So so there is kind of a set it and forget it option. And like you were talking about earlier, you're having issues with your emulators and getting them set up. But like I said, I use uh, like EmuDeck on my Asus ROG Ally, and I didn't have to do nothing. I, I just installed it. Everything's set up for me. Good to go, right? Um, that that's basically it just you know um 
there's so much information out there too, like on YouTube and stuff. Like someone can watch a, a five minute video or a 10 minute video on something they're interested in playing and they can have it set up in a few minutes without having to tinker with anything. So, yeah. um, you know, that's what, that's where I think the whole thing is going in the next couple of years. I think emulation and, um, game preservation is really important because like you said, is our old games going to be like old toys from like the 1940s and the thirties that are just like, you know, American pickers might find one that still exists in America. <laughs> like, are games going to be like that? That's why, you know, I'm excited where the emulation market's going is because it's more, it's getting more accessible to people where they don't have to be an expert on anything. They can just buy something and they've got, you know, 30, 40 years of history in their pockets. It's just, yeah. you know, that's the way to go. It's, it's crazy how much it's come from a, a plug and play or a pick up and play model since like the original RG 35 XX, which I found like the stock OS option. I used it for like 10 minutes and it was like, that is garbage. Yeah. Let's install garlic and just like absolutely hack the ever loving crap out of this thing <laughs> to something like this, which like I got the one memory card option. I installed my own with a ton of games and all that kind of stuff on it. But like I checked out the, the one memory card I haven't checked, like touch the OS on this. Like you said, if, if you pick like the, the RA games or whatever that, that folder is called and use retro for everything. And, you know, even the built in games, like I said, I messed around with wave rates that was built into this thing. You know, I've added a ton of my own, but which were easy to find, you know, and, and I, I, I've had them for a while of games that I used to own and all that kind of stuff. And again, we won't get into the wrong you mean conversation, you but like, own. <laughs> yes yeah or, or yes, still own actually for a lot of the game yeah um but you know like the, it is this is so much it's two years newer and is so much more user-friendly pick up and play where i've i've suggested this old one to a couple of people but i also said like when you get it, bring over your memory cards. I'm going to have some fun with them and I'm going to give you back a functional system because this out of the box wasn't. Yeah. Um, yeah. This thing, I would suggest to anyone, you can tinker with it and put MuOS on it or garlic or um, a few other different ones that you want to. But like, I'm so much more impressed with this out of the box two years later. Yep. Yeah. I can't wait to see what's two years down the road. I think it's going to be crazy. Um, I do want to ask both of you, because I keep saying this is like my perfect handheld for me, my sweet spot of nostalgia. I know I talked about like GameCube and Wii and N64 and all that kind of stuff, but my sweet spot, especially for like where I want to play retro is usually handheld or NES, SNES, that kind of stuff. This is damn near perfect for me. Clamshell design something easy very simple button layout no analog sticks or anything like that this is as close to perfect as i can pretty much imagine it does a couple of extra things but like i don't want to go above N snes for 98 percent of what i feel like is my sweet spot for retro so for you guys what's your perfect handheld like is it something a little bit more complex like todd like something that you have that can throw some more power is it something small and compact like this like where's where's your personal sweet spot um let alone for like you know this can do everything and you know that kind of magical device but what's what's your personal one just making up a device um adam let's let's start with you um that's a hard one because i have I have two sides of me. There's me at home, and then there's adventurous me that loves to go out everywhere. Um, so, if you look at my like Instagram posts, um, you'll see like I got the SP out and I'm in a hammock or I'm having a fire or I'm out hiking trails or, you know, like if I'm traveling, I'd much rather take something like this with me. Like you said, this is like perfect for everything you'd want uh, like that, but. When I'm home, um, I do. I don't really like to 
to go to like five or six different things because I've just been so like deep in the emulation now that um, like my perfect hand or my perfect uh, sweet spot now is something like the Asus ROG Ally because um, any itch that I get to play of any game in history almost uh, besides the ones that are inaccessible. Um, I, I can, I just have that set up. I can, I can, if I'm feeling lazy and I just want to lay down and play the handheld, I can do that. If, if I want to hook it up to my TV, I can do that. Uh, I can join in on parties and play Xbox game pass with my friends. Like it just offers everything. So like to me, mm-hmm. that's perfect. It's like, you know, instead of having to switch to different things, it's just, it's an all in one. So, um, yeah, it's it's kind of a toss up that way between what I'm doing. You know, I do have so to Mark, say this that... is my. Oh, go ahead. Oh no, I was I was gonna say I I I went up the coast. I was in uh, in Ganesh, if you're familiar, um, like northern Cape Breton, and uh, this was this was so perfect to take there because like sitting down, listening to the waves coming in off the beach, that kind of stuff. Like I didn't bring it down to the beach because I was like brand new, don't want to get sand in it, but like. This thing again was perfect up there. And like my brother took his switch and all that kind of stuff, but I was just super happy to be playing like Pokemon and Mario golf, like just sitting on the deck, listening to the waves. Um, yeah. It was perfect for that kind of stuff. Just whip it in my pocket and go on little adventures. So uh, yeah, perfect use case. Sorry, Todd, go ahead. No, this is my perfect device. If I can get it set up right. That's right. the thing. Yeah. Cause it's got the controls work for everything. You're not limited through the mm-hmm. control scheme, you can do everything. You can uh, play Netflix games that you have with the device. You can play cloud gaming. You can do remote play. So it's the one device to rule them all versus 85 different devices, you know, my Switch, whatever, um, which obviously is, is what it is. So that if, if it works, great, because the battery's life is ridiculous on this thing. It's mm-hmm. like tablet ready. It's, a, it's an Android tablet, too, so you can do whatever you want. So it's a perfect thing as long as you can get it set up. So... That's my device. But my other device that I really want is a full on arcade system mm. like Adam has behind him. Cause I want to play those old school arcade games. Yeah. Android, uh, you know, basically um, Alien versus Predator. I want to play X Men uh, six players. I want to do that stuff where it's a cooperative experience that you can't really recreate. I mean, you could play it on a handheld, but you yeah. want to be on a big screen yeah. turtles, you know, Simpsons. Yeah. Oh, so that's yeah. what I want. So that's what I want to do is that for me, retro is arcades yeah. more so than anything because, um, and I put in the, the, the chat, there's a, a system or a, a service called Antstream arcade. You can play it on Xbox and PC right now. It mm. is like 1300 games. It's all streaming. You can play a hundred dollars for a lifetime subscription and it's a billion systems. It's pretty impressive. Oh. And it's 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 awesome. And Luke Lore talked about this on XCP. It's an awesome value. All the different systems, mm-hmm. all the capabilities, and it's on your Xbox. It's on PC. Uh, I would love if Nintendo did this because that would make it even better, having it a handheld. But this is where I think maybe the yeah. future is, where we get light. But this is all tied to licenses. If, if licensees don't support this, it doesn't happen. This is legal. Yeah. This is old retro. This is the best way to do it, where you don't have to worry about how it plays because they already have the 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 OS. Everything works yeah. perfect, and you don't have to worry about downloading ROMs, worrying about the what OS version you've got. You can play online with people. It's perfect. But once again, I hope they do well. So, and stream yeah. on online. It's I think it's thirty dollars a year or hundred dollars lifetime. So it's yeah, yeah, that's pretty sick. We just want to play our old games easily. That's really the, the yeah, goal. That's, that, that's um, where I think yeah. it's headed. Like in the next couple of years, uh, if you look back at this conversation, you'll be like, whoa, if, if we only knew, you know what I mean? But I, I think it's going to get easier and easier. Uh, even if, you know, licensee people like they, or licensors, like if they, you know, backlash against it, I think it's just going to happen anyway. Because like, is it really worth them fighting for you know um i think the newer systems you get into the bigger problem that'll be but uh you know i i don't know i i I can't see it being too much of a gatekeeping issue with the way it's been going at least Mm. yeah and 
quite honestly, Nintendo's like the last holdout for getting to play their old games easily. Yeah. Obviously, they're, they've made some headway with uh, the Nintendo Online. The biggest thing is we still don't know with Switch 2 if they'll let us play the games whoever purchased on the Switch on the next system. If they do, amazing, because yeah. they've already had so much of their catalog, plus Nintendo Switch Online, that quite honestly keep bringing it on and it's great if they don't or they screwed up somehow that's going to be very frustrating because it feels like they've got a lot of systems they've left behind that people just want to play like the pokemon games mark i mean how often are nintendo switch online where's going to be the next pokemon game well it's the mystery dungeon not the old school games man but they're not exactly yeah yeah i keep saying that like they shut off the 3ds they just like Put the Pokemon games on Nintendo Switch Online, add the Pokemon Home integration, and just go almost full catalog backwards compatible. Like just it's it's right there. Just just do it. Yeah, and, and it crazy. sucks too because Nintendo are the Nintendo ninjas when it comes to the emulation world because yeah, they're the ones that are making it hard for people to access any Nintendo stuff like. Uh, there's the uh, recent Nintendo emulators, like the Switch emulators that wrote recently. Like Nintendo sued them and you know fined them a bunch, and and yeah. uh, they're shut down now. Uh, and even these little handhelds, like these, used to come with Mario on the original. Like Mario Three would come on these, not now, not yeah. like some of the first party Nintendo games are like not even on these anymore because they're like we don't want to poke the bear you know because nintendo is brutal with that kind of stuff so it's really on them to make their games accessible to people and it's it's just it it's weird i i don't know if they're holding out because like now they're doing the n64 thing and then maybe hopefully they'll do like the gamecube online like we talked about but it's just it takes them so long to they're, they're, it's, it's always like they're out of sync with like the North American market, what people mm. want versus, you know, what, what, and it's like, they've always been kind of weird like that though. Cause like, remember even on like the Super Nintendo and stuff, they had like the special chips in the cartridges. So like third party people couldn't make games for consoles and yep. stuff. Like they've always just been so hard to deal with. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. It's tough. Nintendo has the, Nintendo has the richest history in video games. And they just announced that they're going to have their Nintendo Museum in Japan, which is great. Um, but they are still protective of things that they don't want you to experience, and the fans want it. Yeah, like yeah. we just want to experience all those old things. I mean, there's no way to play Eternal Darkness right now. If you wanted to play Eternal <laughs> Darkness, how are you doing that? Don't know. Uh, it's kind of like just they're trapped on an old system. And if you buy an old game and you buy an old GameCube, like it's Nintendo's not making any, and that's the biggest thing. Nintendo's not making any money off things that are not readily available to sell. So if they can figure out how to sell stuff, they should value your property and sell it. But don't tell people you can't play it and we're not going to sell it to you because, you know, at that point, it's just like, are you insane? Yeah. Yeah. That's why I think hire people to make this stuff available. Yeah, like I don't want these games to be the the toy in the barn that like someone finds at, at a random time. It's like, oh, there's only one of these left on the planet. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. What was that one game, Starfy? Starfy is a game series that has never been in the U.S. and they just put it on Nintendo on Switch Online. It's like, well, why are these games not in the U.S.? Mm-hmm. Don't know, <laughs> but you can play one now, and it's in Japanese. <laughs> Nintendo logic. Oh well. Uh well, if you have questions about retro gaming, we've introduced you to a very capable guest who can help you down the process if you want to experience games from your past. So thank you so much, Adam, for being on. Mr. Bat Pixel, Batty P, as I like to call him <laughs> just now. We go way back. Me and yeah. Batty P. Uh yeah. love having you on. Another Atlantean from the uh, Canadian region. Stay yeah, safe. safe. Watch out for sea serpents on the Atlantic coast. Yeah. Hopefully that storm don't take us out here tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So with that, get rid of that. 
Yeah. So, so Adam, before you leave, tell us how you, people can find you and reach out to you on the interwebs. So the best place to find me is on YouTube. So that's youtube.com slash at batpixel. And I found out on social media that there's some old Batpixel handles being used. So usually on social media like Instagram, X, and stuff like that, it's, you can find me at Batpixel channel. And you'll see my same blue little logo with the pixelated bat on it. So not hard to find. It's amazing. Links, Thank you so much. It's been, it's been a... Yeah. And, and if people, if you don't believe what Mark says about Canada... You know what? Check out with Adam. He'll he'll validate it or say Mark's full yes. of it. Um, yeah, <laughs> that was great. Absolutely. And there's lots of gaming nerds up here, so you'll fit right yeah. in. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Love it. Yeah. I love it. Ah, oh, this is amazing. This Canadian connection. Absolutely love it. Mark, how can people follow you? You can follow me mostly on uh, Instagram, sometimes TikTok or Threads. Uh, Canardian underscore Jedi. Um, and uh yeah and in our discord uh discord channel creeping around there i was like i said i was away for the weekend and and on vacation last week so i was a little quiet in those places but i'll i'll be back to it now so uh so hit me up yeah harass mark he deserves it um (laughs) uh you can follow me at uh t oxtra and at seeker friends unite on threads uh but also if you want to game with me which i don't do much sparty on 98 on xbox and switch and sparty on uh 1998 on psn we're also on our discord also on youtube uh just check in with us if you have any questions we're very friendly we would like to talk to you so thank you gentlemen we had a great journey in the world of video games the retro uh scape was covered and we support your service with this uh, world of video games that we cover. So I want to tell you, everyone, be cool. And remember, everyone, it's better to play together. Thank you, and good night.